Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So I have here the Huawei Mate XS2. Doesn't this look just like a slap phone, but it is in fact a foldable. Um, if you follow my channel, you know that I first got my hands on this device like three weeks ago in Europe, in Milan, when this phone launched overseas. This is not the European model though. I did not get this from Huawei. This is the China model that I purchased myself from Trinity Electronics. So Trinity Electronics is probably one of the best importers in Hong Kong in the world. They get phones before any other store in the world and if you want to import phones you might want to reach out to them because they do ship to many countries but anyway i'm gonna take this phone out and about for a day to do like a real day in the life video but before i begin i wanted to go over overall hardware a little bit more and also the multitasking gestures and features of this phone because i really think huawei has developed one of the best most intuitive multitasking systems around let's begin Okay, so the first thing I notice, and most of you guys will notice if you decide to pick up this phone, is how thin and light this phone is for a foldable. The Huawei Mate XS2 measures only 11.1 millimeters in thickness. That's really no thicker than like an iPhone 13 Pro or 13 Pro Max with a case. Actually, it might be a little bit thinner than an iPhone 13 Pro Max with a case. And it weighs only 255 grams, which is again, light for a foldable and no heavier than an iPhone 13 Pro Max with a case. Now the biggest catch is with the Huawei Mate XS2, you will probably want to use a case too because of the fact that this phone is all screen, literally. The front and the back is covered by screen at all times. So if you use this phone naked like this, it's scary because if you drop this phone, I mean, it's probably a goner. If you accidentally bump this phone against the edge of a table or something, it's probably a goner. So the good news is Huawei designed a pretty clever case that was not in the original Mate X or the Mate XS2. This is a pretty clever design because a lot of us thought you can't really build a case for a phone like this, but Huawei managed to do it. Okay, now the case will protect the back and also the left and right side. Now, if you accidentally clang your phone on the edge of a table, you don't have to have a heart attack because the edge is covered. Now, if you drop the phone face down, you might still damage it, but you can say that about any other phone. Okay, so how do you unfold the phone with this case? Well, Huawei's case actually has a little flap that comes loose like this. Then you can still unfold the phone. I mean, it does take an extra step. It'll take you an extra half a second anytime you want to unfold the phone. And when the phone is unfolded, you do have this little thing hanging off the side that may be annoying to some people, but I actually like it. It helps me grip onto the phone a little bit more like this, like more security. So another benefit of using this case is um, it doubles as a stand. So if you open like this and unfold, but then instead of unfolding all the way, you let the case lock into this corner. Then you have yourself a little stand that allows you to watch videos like this. If you're wondering how I'm running YouTube right now, I'm running YouTube on a web browser. Now that the phone has a case, then it is now a little bit thicker, but it is still only about 12 millimeters in thickness and about 270 grams now, but still no thicker or heavier than a Galaxy Z Fold 3 or like a Xiaomi Mix Fold or an Oppo Find N. So I'm going to take off the case for now, but whenever I step outside, I do use a case just for peace of mind. But at home, I can go naked. So next up, I want to talk about the awesome intuitive multitasking gestures of the Huawei Mate XS. I guess this is not exclusive to the Mate XS. This is a Harmony OS multitasking gesture or EMUI. So basically, if you open an app and you swipe up to the right side, it immediately jumps into floating window. And then in floating window mode, you can move it around. You can swipe it into the corner to shrink it a little bit like this. You can bring it back out into like a small size like this. And then if you want to get rid of it, just swipe down and you'll get rid of it. Now conversely, if you do the same action with the same app, swipe up, instead of going to the right side, you go to the left side, you jump straight into split screen. So now you can open two windows at the same time. So I really like how intuitive the multitasking gesture is on this phone. Now compare this to something like the Galaxy Z Fold 3 running one UI. If I wanna multitask with the web browser, so I swipe up and hold. See, when I swipe and hold, the app moves to the side. So I have to swipe over, then I have to long press on this app to bring up this menu. And from here, I can go into either split screen mode or floating window. So you see how that took like four steps and about two and a half to three seconds. So the next thing I want to address is um, the fact that this phone cannot run Google mobile services. I think by now, this is not news to anybody. So, you know, you just have to decide whether or not you can make do with it. For some people, it's an absolute deal breaker. You just cannot use the phone without Google. Maybe literally your entire work is tied to Google apps or something. For me, it is not ideal because I'm a YouTuber and YouTube is part of Google, but 
it is not a complete deal breaker. As I have explained many times in the past, you actually can still run many Google apps on this phone. Like Chrome still works. Google Maps will still work. You just cannot log into Google Maps. So you can still navigate from point A to point B on Google Maps. And also if you download Microsoft Outlook, and Microsoft Outlook is available officially in Huawei's App Store, you can still access your Gmail and even your calendar, your Google Calendar on Microsoft Outlook. Now there's a 32 megapixel selfie camera located here in the hole punch that allows you to take selfies now without needing to flip the phone around like you did in previous years. Okay, now look at the main camera system. You have a triple camera setup here, headlined by 50 megapixel main camera, f1.8 aperture, a 13 megapixel ultra wide f2.2 aperture, and then an eight megapixel telephoto zoom lens, 3.5 times optical zoom. Now powering the phone is a Snapdragon 888. Not only is this a one year old SOC, it is also the 4G version. You don't get 5G support on this phone. The reason for that is because of US sanctions again. So the US have apparently forbidden Huawei from buying the newest SOC or something. And there's also a 4,880 milliamp hour battery inside this phone. So I'm gonna step out right now. Let's keep track of battery. So it is 91% battery right now at 148. PM 91% Let's step out. Okay, so you're watching 4K 30 footage with the Huawei Mate XS2 right now. It is raining, obviously, but uh, I'm pretty sure the phone will be fine even if it doesn't have IP68 water and dust resistance. Like as long as you don't dip the phone in water, it will be fine. So yeah, there's a main camera footage. Stabilization should be pretty good. I've seen some footage from earlier. And you can switch lenses in the middle of filming. So you can switch all the way out to ultra wide. So now we're watching ultra wide camera footage right now. Ultra wide footage. And then I think you can zoom to it. Let's see if it's optical zoom when you get to 3.5 times zoom. Okay, 3.4 and now it's 3.5. Yeah, I think the telephoto zoom lens kicked in. Okay, exposure got a little bit wonky, but then not fixed. So now this is a 5.4. You can go all the way up to 10 times zoom. So this is 10 times zoom right now. Actually, it's looking okay. Okay, main camera footage here. So I'm going to step into a coffee shop to get some coffee first. This is one of my favorite coffee shops in Hong Kong. It's very hipster and pretentious though. So I get a lot of emails with documents and spec sheets that I have to look at and looking on a larger screen is so much more convenient than on a smaller screen. So of course the benefit of using this phone is you can use the main camera to film yourself and still see yourself because there's a screen on the back. My camera footage on a moving bus. So I hopped on this bus without knowing exactly where I was going. So I had to check Google Maps to find a spot. And that's where having a larger screen comes in handy because I can use Google Maps to explore the area on a larger canvas. Okay, so you're watching front-facing video footage from the Huawei Mate XS2. I have arrived at my destination. This area is called Tun Moon. It's on the outer edges of Hong Kong. We're really close to China right now, or mainland China anyway. So I like to come out to these areas because it's, it's a lot quieter than central Hong Kong. Like in the center of Hong Kong where I live, it's super packed at all times. When you come out here, there's a little bit more space. Another reason I like coming to these places is because you can usually find good food for really cheap. It's a little bit more affordable than where I live and also you know, um, these stalls are independent stalls. They're not like corporate chains. So right here, this is one of my favorite type of food is uh, cheng fun. It's a Chinese, I guess the best way to describe it is like Chinese rice noodles. So I will get some. These are Hong Kong fish balls. Actually, Mudo, you are so right? I got my chung fun, and whoa, there's like a nice little bouquet 
even in video. Like, you notice the background is a little bit blurred right now. That was pretty nice. So yeah, this might not be the most photogenic dish, but it's really good. So it's basically rice noodles with like soy sauce, sesame, and some hot sauce. And I got some fish balls too. It's a Hong Kong specialty. So we're at six times zoomer now. So one improvement Huawei has made to the camera app is that the zoom dial is now at the bottom where it should be. In previous Huawei phones, if you remember, the zoom dial is on the right side of the screen, which was very hard for me to reach if I hold the phone with my left hand like this. Okay, so I've been using the phone for two hours and the battery has dropped 30%. Keep in mind this was heavy use. I had the screen on basically the whole time. A lot of reading, a lot of photos and videos, streaming Spotify, using Google Maps, all of that. So it was like the most heavy use situation other than gaming. Now the good news is the phone does come with a 66 watt charging brick in the box that will top up the phone from zero to 100 in about 30 minutes. So I want to take time to talk a little bit about the photo gallery app of the Huawei Mate XS. There's actually a full-fledged video editor inside the gallery app and it's pretty cool. It allows you to make a bunch of edits to videos that you can't do on an iPhone or a Galaxy phone. With those phones, if you want to edit a video directly in the photo gallery app, you can only trim the beginning and the end and it made me add some filters. But on Huawei Mate XS, you can actually cut the video in the middle, splice out clips if you want. You can add an outro with text, you can add graphics, and you can even put a second video on top. So for like a picture in picture kind of vibe, there's just a lot of stuff you can do directly within the app. There's now a nighttime video with the Huawei Mate XS2, this is 4K30. So I don't know if stabilization is gonna take a hit because this is a lower light situation. Okay, now this is the ultra wide and you can see footage looks a little bit softer because this is low light situation. Okay, so now I'm in a pretty dark alley. Time to test really low light photography. So I have the Huawei Mate XS2 right here. We'll take a main camera. And then ultra wide. Now I'm gonna take the same shots of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So we can see that whether it's the ultra wide camera or the main camera, the iPhone 13 Pro Max seems to have a little bit more natural colors. But you have to remember the iPhone 13 Pro Max also took a very long night mode, whereas the Huawei makes us to kind of snap the photos immediately. Okay, so you're watching 4K 30 footage with the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the Huawei Mate XS2. I think right now from the viewfinder is looking like the iPhone 13 Pro Max video footage looks a little bit better. You gotta keep in mind, this is a really dark alley though, so you know, this is a really difficult test that I'm doing. Okay, so when it comes to really low light photography, I think the iPhone 13 Pro Max wins a little bit. And then if we move to really low light videos, then the iPhone 13 Pro Max is quite a bit noticeably better than the Huawei Mate XS2. But you know, here are more photo and video samples at night with the Huawei Mate XS2. Now, this is less extreme circumstances. This is night shots, but with a little bit of city lights. And you can see the Huawei Mate XS2 does a pretty good job. So overall, I wouldn't say the Huawei Mate XS2 has the best cameras around. It's um, definitely a step behind the top slap phones. But for a foldable phone, I think the camera system is actually pretty good because you have to remember, most foldable phones don't really have a true flagship tier camera system. And neither does the Huawei Mate XS2, to be honest. 
but um, it's good enough. So after a whole days of testing, I hope I gave you a pretty good idea of what to expect using the Huawei Mix S2. This phone is not cheap. It retails for 1,999 euros. That's the global version. And China is a little bit cheaper. I think China is like 8999 Chinese yuan or something. If you're importing from China, you're gonna have to pay the markup anyway. So either way, the phone's gonna be around $2,000. Now, $2,000 for a phone that you can't really run Google Mobile services and is running on a one-year-old SOC, it's gonna sound foolish to a lot of people. And I think for most people, you're still better off buying the Galaxy Z Fold 3 because it's just a safer purchase. However, the Huawei Mate Plus 2 is not for the average consumer. It's for enthusiasts. It's for people who want something different, for people who may be fans of Huawei devices. Like me, I am a fan of Huawei devices. So even though, you know, like I already said, not having Google, it's not going to be ideal for me. I'm still going to make the Mi Asus to my daily driver for a while because I'm a fan of Huawei hardware and I want to uh, use something that's new and different. And I really want a foldable phone that doesn't feel like a brick in my pocket. And the Huawei Mi Asus 2 achieves all of that. So yeah, that's about it for this review slash day in the life with the Huawei Mi Asus 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot more content coming out. I am reviewing the M2 MacBook Pro very soon, so stay tuned. I have a lot of gadgets incoming. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.